thank you for the introduction and thank you everyone for coming. I'm Elizabeth Mina and this is Ellen Borgel and we've been conducting research this summer as a part of an RU program at Grand Valley State University. And we have been studying a variation of Sudoku puzzles called Aeropath Sudoku. And here's an example of an Aeropath Sudoku puzzle. It's actually the only puzzle that we were able to find on the internet. We got it off the website list is there. The rules of Aeropath Sudoku have the same rules of regular Sudoku in that you place the digits one through nine in every row, column, and a three by three block. However, with Aeropath Sudoku, each doll has an arrow and the arrow points to the next digit within the block, and then the nine points back to the one. So in this example, we start out with only one numerical clue, and that's the two right there. And that cell has an arrow pointing right, so that tells us that the three can only go in those two cells. Now you might notice that the three cannot actually go immediately to the right of the two, because that cell has an arrow pointing left, which would mean that the four would go where the two is, which would be impossible. So we know that the three has to go right there. And then from there, because the arrow points up, we know that the four has to go in one of those two cells. So we can just use a combination of these arrow path rules and our regular Sudoku rules and solve the puzzle, and it will look like this. And one more thing to note about arrow path puzzles is that in each of the cells, we can only choose one of those eight possible arrows. So as it often is in math, we found it was easier to start with some smaller sizes of Aeropath puzzles rather than diving right into the Sudoku puzzles. So the two smaller cases that we've also been studying along with Sudoku are Rokudoku, which is a six by six board made up of two by three blocks, and Shidoku, which is a four by four board made up of two by two blocks. And these are two puzzles that we made ourselves this summer. And we actually have some handouts with some more puzzles that we've created this summer. If you're interested, you can come see us afterwards. So, in this presentation, first we want to go over the two types of blocks that there are in Aeropath puzzles. And then we want to explain how we were able to take those blocks and put them together to form boards. And then finally, how we formed puzzles from those boards. So first, the two types of blocks. The first type of block is a number block, which is just an n by n block containing the digits 1 to mn. So here's an example of a shidoku, or a 2 by 2 number block, that contains the digits 1 to 4. The second type of block is an arrow block, which is a block that is filled with only reasonable arrows. And by reasonable arrows, we just mean that the arrows have to point to other cells within the block. So those red arrows on the right point outside the block, and so we would say that those are unreasonable. All right, so one of the first questions that we asked this summer is, can we take any number block and add an arrow path to it? Or another way to think of it is, could you just take any number block that you would find in a regular Sudoku puzzle and put it into an arrow path Sudoku puzzle? And the answer is no. And here is an example. You notice that there's no arrow that can go from the 2 to the 3. And there's also no arrow that can go from the 3 to the 4. So we had to define valid number blocks as number blocks for which an arrow path actually exists. So in this example, we would say that this number block is invalid. So a helpful visual to help us distinguish between valid and invalid number blocks is a chessboard. And you can think of the numbers as queens. So suppose that queen were a one. We know that the two could only go in the green highlighted cells because those are the only places that a queen could move during a chess game. So we say that a number block is valid if each number in the block is only a queen's move away from the previous one. So then we started counting valid number blocks. And we started with the smallest case, the Shidoku case, and we noted right away that all the cells are only a queen's move away from each other. So if we could just count the number of Shidoku number blocks, and that'll give us the number of valid Shidoku number blocks. So the number of Shidoku number blocks is just a permutation of the digits 1 to 4. So there are going to be 4 factorial, or 24, valid Shidoku number blocks. With Rokudoku and Sudoku, we couldn't just count the number of number blocks because there are going to be some that are invalid, like the one I showed you um, a couple slides ago. So we wrote a computer program that counted all of the possible number blocks, but then we told it to only count the ones that contain only Queen's moves. So we came up with 288 valid Rokudoku number blocks and 35,280 valid Sudoku number blocks. So now let's move on 
on to talking about arrow blocks. So is every arrow block solvable? That is, can we fill an MIN arrow block with the digits 1 through MN such that they satisfy the arrow path? And it turns out that we can't. So let's look at this unsolvable arrow block. So if this arrow block were solvable, we should be able to place the 1 in any cell and then follow the path through. So let's say we place a 1 in the upper left hand corner. Then it follows that the 1 must point to the 2. You can see the contradiction that the 2 can't point back to the 1. So here's an example of an unsolvable arrow block. So then we thought about how many solvable arrow blocks there are. And if you'll recall, Elizabeth told us that there are 24 valid Shadoku number blocks. And what we found is that four number blocks correspond to a single Shadoku arrow block. So you can see we can start with the first one and place a 1 in the upper left hand corner and follow the arrow path through. We can then shift all the digits up by one, so we start with the two in the upper left hand corner. Then we can shift them up again, so we start with a three or a four. So in order to count the number of solvable Shadoku arrow blocks, we can take 24, the number of valid number blocks, and divide by four, the number of labelings, to find six solvable Shadoku arrow blocks. Similarly, solvable Rokudoku arrow blocks can each be labeled six ways. So we found that there are 48 solvable Rokudoku arrow blocks. So let's sum this up. Here are the numbers we've seen already. So we found 24 valid Shadoku number blocks divided by four, the number of labelings, to find six solvable arrow blocks. Similarly for Rokudoku, we found 280 valid number blocks divided by the number of labelings to find six solvable, or 48 solvable arrow blocks. So can we follow the same pattern and divide the number of valid Sudoku number blocks by nine, the number of labelings, to find 3,920 solvable Sudoku arrow blocks? It turns out actually that we can't. So let's look at this example. So this solvable arrow block corresponds to two distinct number blocks. So we know that they're distinct because the top row of each is the same, whereas the bottom two rows are different. And each of these number blocks corresponds to nine different number blocks through, through relabeling. So we can see that this solvable arrow block corresponds to 18 different number blocks. And we can see that and we found actually 32 blocks exist like this. So in total, there are 3,888 solvable Sudoku arrow blocks. So now that we've wrapped up blocks, how can we put them together to form boards? And we'll focus on putting together Sudoku boards. In 2007, Tom proved that there are 288 different Sudoku number boards. And we know that every Sudoku number board is valid or has an arrow path. And also that just like the Sudoku arrow blocks, um, every Sudoku arrow board can be labeled in at least four ways. So at most, there are 72 possible Shadoku arrow boards. So are there actually this many? Well, it turns out there's going to be fewer. So let's look at these two distinct number boards. So we know that they're distinct because the top two rows on each is the same, whereas the bottom two rows are different. However, when we put arrows in, we can see that the arrow board of each is the same. And again, we can relabel the first number board in four different ways, and same for the second number board. So we have a single arrow board that corresponds to eight different number boards and there are 16 boards like this. So in total, there are 56 different Shinoku arrow path boards. We found 40 boards that correspond to four labelings or four number boards, and 16 arrow boards that correspond to eight labelings. So we have accounted for all 288 Shinoku number boards counted by Tolman. So now that we've found all possible Shinoku arrow path puzzles, or arrow path boards, excuse me, how can we turn these into puzzles? We found we only need one clue for each of the 40 arrow boards that correspond to four number boards in order to create a puzzle with a unique solution. So if we place the four where it is, you can see that we have a unique solution. You can place the clue in any of the 16 possible cells, and it can be any of the numbers one through four. So there are 64 puzzles that correspond to this board using the minimal number of clues. We found we need two clues for each of the 16 arrow boards that correspond to eight number boards. So in this example, we have a two in the bottom band, and then we can fill in the bottom band like this. However, there are still two ways to fill in the top band. So we need to place a clue in the top band as well. And then we have a puzzle with a unique solution. So without loss of generality, we can place the first clue in the bottom band. So we have any of eight cells to choose from, and we can choose any of the numbers one through four. We then have to place the second clue in the top band, so we have the remaining eight cells to choose from. And because we have to follow regular set of the number rules, um, we only have two numbers to choose from. So for boards like this, there are 512 possible puzzles using the minimal number of clues. So in 
total, we found 40 boards that correspond to 64 possible puzzles, and 16 boards that correspond to 512 possible puzzles. So there are 10,752 different Shidoku error path puzzles using the minimal number of clues. And now Elizabeth will tell you about larger error path puzzles. Okay, so how about Roku Doku error path puzzles? We were able to prove that a Roku Doku error path puzzle will need at most four clues. So we found that as long as we pick at least one clue in every band or horizontally adjacent box, and at least two clues from every pillar or vertically adjacent box, we can find a reproductive puzzle that has a unique solution. So in this example, we start out with those four clues, and then with those four blocks, we can fill in the blocks in a unique way. And then with the remaining two blocks, just by using regular subjective <coughs> number rules, there's only going to be one way to fill in the rest of the puzzle. So we were able to prove that four is an upper bound for the number of clues needed in a Roku Doku error path puzzle. And because we were able to find a specific example that actually needs four clues, we say that four would be a tight upper bound for the number of clues needed in a Roku Doku error path puzzle. With Sudoku, we proved that it's going to need at most six clues. In this case, we need to choose at least two clues from every band and at least two clues from every pillar. So here, if we pick these six clues, we can fill in these blocks only one way. And then with the remaining three blocks, again, we can use just our regular Sudoku number rules and fill in the numbers in that way. Now, we proved that six was an upper bound for the number of clues necessary for the Sudoku puzzle. However, this example does not actually need six clues. <coughs> it only needs two clues. And we were not able to find one that needs all six clues. So we have yet to prove whether or not six is a tight upper bound for the number of necessary clues in an error path Sudoku puzzle. So like I mentioned before, we have puzzles that we made that we would like to hand out to you. We have plenty, so come and see us afterwards if you're interested. And we would like to especially thank the NSF and our faculty advisor for all of their support for this project. Thank you. do a regular Sudoku, some of the puzzles are hard and some are easy. Mm -hmm. um, do you have something similar going on here? A little bit. Um, it has a lot to do with how many clues we start off with. So with the ones that need three clues to begin with, they're just going to be easier. Um, actually, with, with a puzzle like this, we found some of those, like we choose from those 32 blocks that require, um, that have two different that have 18 different numberings, that can make it a lot harder because then you start off, when you start off with the one block, you don't know exactly which way to fill in the rest of the block, so that can make it harder. Right, so like sometimes it depends on where the clue is. So like we have an example of a puzzle with a clue in, um, in this block, and then either of these two blocks, you could follow the same cycle through in six different ways, like for both blocks, but only one way was correct. So you had to go and like fill in the other blocks first to figure out which one. Is there a notion of equivalence between blocks? Mm -hmm. What and what? Is it? We use a lot with symmetries, and then we also did a lot with we looked at the difference between numbers in the rows, and then we found out based on the difference of numbers how we could put the blocks together. So we did do a lot with that, especially when we were trying to form the puzzles. We just didn't have time to get into that. Alright, let's thank the speakers again.